Before this video starts, I need to let you know that I have a t-shirt. I never make merch, I never make t-shirts, but I wanted to commemorate the huge effort that making 30 eShop videos and reviewing 300 eShop games was. So I have made this. It's the Beat'em Ups eShop Tour shirt. Kim designed everything on the front and it is gorgeous. And then with the help of Screenwave, we turned it into a band shirt. So the back actually features the dates of all 30 of my episodes and where I was when I filmed them. I love this t-shirt and I love what we've created here. So let's talk about 10 of the best eShop games. 10 eShop games worth buying. That is something I have said oh so many times. But today isn't just another 10 that released recently. Today is the best 10. My absolute favorite 10 eShop games from all of the years that I've been making these videos. I have a spreadsheet that a fan made actually, and thank you so much, that has all of the games I've ever reviewed. And I went through them all and I didn't recognize most of them. I've got to be honest, I've been doing this for six years. But I found my favorites and I voted on them again and again and again with myself, just trying to figure out what my actual 10 was and how to rank them. It was a nightmare, but I'm pretty comfortable with it. I better be. I made a whole t-shirt with these 10 on it. Initially, I thought I would replay them all and review them again here in 2023. But then I thought, wouldn't it just be more special as we take a look back at all of these games to also take a look back at where I was when I reviewed them the first time. I also re-watched all of my reviews and for the most part, I wouldn't change anything I said. I would just change how I said it. I used to scream in my videos. And I don't know why. <laughs> I hope you find a game today that you actually like the look of and you might go and play. I also can't stress enough that for a game to qualify for this video today, I had to have reviewed it in an eShop video. Hades, for example, which easily would have been number one today, but it never was actually in an eShop video, so it's not on the list. Although that does segue us nicely into the special mentions. Hades, of course, my number one, but then also Return to Monkey Island, Grindstone, I did not expect to get so addicted to that. The Ori games. Mini Motorways was a little hidden gem classic for me. Metroid Prime, of course. The Shovel Knight games. Cult of the Lamb. Cuphead. Enter the Gungeon. Thimbleweed Park. Thimbleweed Park was one of the first games I fell in love with on the Switch. Neon White. TMNT. Shredder's Revenge. Bug Fables. Golf Story. Far Lone Sails. I feel like I'm one of the only people that even played that game, but it was so good. Katana's Zero, My Friend Pedro, Tourist, Hob, and even Hellblade. I can't believe that game runs on the Switch as great as it does. So many of these special mentions and my list games today have gone on to get collector's editions, physical releases, but back when we talked about them, they were digital only. Hoping to make a big splash on the eShop, and they really all did. Okay, I'm gonna get started, but with all that said, I really want to encourage all of you to go into the comment section below and leave your top 10. I know you have your own list, so please share them below. Coming in at number 10 on the list was initially number 9, but I switched it so that we didn't start with a clip from like 2018. <laughs> By golly gosh, I don't want to see that yet. So number 10 in a video I released on March 8th, 2023 is Inscription. Throughout my break in January, out of all the games I played, it was Inscription that left the biggest impression on me, and I've been dying to talk about it. Pun not intended. I love card games. And my first thought going into this one is that I was about to experience another roguelike card game. And I was excited to discover new mechanics and build the best deck possible and get addicted to it. But very quickly, I realized things were not as they seem. It started when I noticed that one of my cards seemed like it was trying to communicate with me. The words on the card were calling out for help. And on further inspection, I realized it was indeed sentient and wanted to help me plot a scheme to escape the hostage situation we were both apparently trapped in. You see, I wasn't allowed to leave this room or the game 
neither were the cards. This is when it began to sink in. Things like the points I earned for winning battles were given to me as human teeth. And I was allowed to tilt the scales in my favor if I offered up my own teeth or even my body parts. Every defeat just meant we reshuffled and had to start again. That's when our capture asked me to grab something from the other side of the room. And it's here where I found many clues and objects scattered about. With no way out of this room, I was forced to keep playing in hopes of finding a way out. Through all the craziness that happens, there is legitimately a really fun card game in here too. In fact, at times, I wish some of the craziness would slow down so that I could just enjoy the card game. Inscription left a huge impact on me. I was thinking about that game for weeks after I finished it. I almost gave it its own video, but ended up putting it into an eShop video, probably because of time, but also I like to review these games in my lists. <laughs> All right, I can't put it off forever. We're gonna go into January of 2018. There was a few games when the Switch first came out that really sold me on trying all of these indies on the eShop. For that reason, Fury will always have a very special place in my heart. I wanna come right out the gate swinging and talk about one of my favorite games that was released in 2017, and that's Fury. So on one side, you have a twin stick bullet hell style game, and on the other side, you have sword play that relies heavily on parry. Every battle in this game is just one big boss battle and I love it so much. The gameplay is actually pretty simple. There's only four things you really have to worry about. Attacking with your sword, parrying with your sword, shooting and dodging. And that's hard when you just have everything being thrown at you. This game reminds me so much of something like Dragon Ball Z, both in the gameplay where you could be zipping around each other, dodging and parrying and attacking and going so crazy that if anyone was watching you, it'd be like Krillin watching Goku and Cell fight and not really not knowing what the heck's going on. Every time you take down one of the boss's health bars, he goes into the next stage where things get more difficult and more amped up and you rinse and repeat until you manage to actually take him down. But a pro tip, master that counter. If you can master the parry and you can get good at it, the rest of the game will actually be fairly easy, as, well, as easy as this game can be. In between the really intense boss battles, there's this walking stage where you just casually walk. In fact, you can even choose to auto walk where you just sit back and watch this character walk. That contrast between extreme action where you're just sweating and frustrated and you just want to pull your hair out because you keep dying and then all of a sudden there's just an auto walk and you're just kind of taking in the scenery there's such an extreme contrast but i love it and while i'm cooling down it's amping me up for the next fight it's such a nice contrast and give and take so if you're up for a challenge and just a really great game. As I said, one of the best ones to come out of 2017. I'm really happy Fury's on the Switch. You, you see what I mean though about the yelling? Why was I screaming? I'll give you some behind the scenes here of 2018. Kim and I had just moved into our first place together. We just started living together. It was a very small one bedroom and a living room situation. We both worked out of that living room and I filmed a lot and I screamed every time and Kim hated it. Talking to all my friends about audio I was always like, how do you guys never peak your audio? Why is my audio always peaking? Kim was like, because you're screaming. I didn't see it. I thought I was just being energetic. I don't know what's more cringe, the fact that we're going back to July of 2018, or the fact that Hollow Knight is actually so low on this list. It's number eight. Hey, what's my favorite? What's my favorite game on this list? Hollow Knight is an absolutely gorgeous 2D Metroidvania game that critics and gamers have been praising ever since it released early last year. Finally finding a home on the Nintendo system, it plays as beautifully as it looks. Whereas in most games, if you're low on health, you would possibly retreat and find more of it. In Hollow Knight, you regain health by engaging in combat and defeating enemies. This mechanic encourages you to stay in fights and battles longer than you otherwise would and take risks where otherwise you wouldn't have. A lot of people like to compare this game to Dark Souls because of course they do. If a game's brutally hard, it's just like Dark Souls. But there are other similarities in this game. Like when you die, you have to go and then find the shadow version of yourself where you died and then get your coins back kind of like in Dark Souls. Also, different enemies have different attack patterns and learning how to fight them in this game gets easier and easier as you learn those patterns. For example, the first time you find a thing, it might kick your butt, but then once you start to learn how to beat it, it becomes a lot easier and the next time you see that thing, you can beat it 
easier than you did the first time. Okay, I will admit this game's actually pretty much a 2D Metroidvania Dark Souls game, but more fun, I like this game a lot more. There are loads of different power-ups and abilities to unlock as you play, and this is just one of those games that needed to come to the Nintendo Switch. You can't have the library the Switch has and not have Hollow Knight find a home amongst all its other Metroidvania pixel art 2D side-scrolling brethren. It's a really great game, and I highly recommend it. Why did anybody watch me back then? I don't know how I kept fans after whatever that is. I think Hollow Knight is one of the games I do wish I could re-review, and maybe one day I will do a video re-reviewing a lot of these. I think the words were right, but I don't think I really captured how special that game is in my video. I don't know why we can't get out of 2018. Apparently all the best eShop games released that year, but Celeste, how could I not? So I'm gonna start with Celeste. Celeste takes place in the wintry, snowy region that is Canada. As I'm sure a lot of you have already heard, this game has a reputation for being a very hard platformer. And I knew that going into the game, I also knew the story, which revolved heavily around depression and anxiety as a driving point. And that immediately resonated with me and made me fall in love with the game as I do have depression and anxiety and I draw a lot of parallels to this game and I can see a lot of the hidden symbolism throughout the game. He doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, he is. Throughout the game, your goal is to climb a mountain, and as you climb the mountain, it gets increasingly harder. And sometimes it's made even harder still by having to face a clone of yourself. In other words, while you try and climb this mountain, which is life, it gets harder and harder as you try and fight with yourself. And a lot of that symbolism definitely wasn't lost on me. I managed to pick up on even the little hidden things that if you don't have depression, you probably wouldn't even catch. Platformers like this aren't really ever known for deep, complex stories, especially not revolving around something as dark as depression. You've had enough, okay. So I really appreciated that, and as I said, it really helped me fall in love with the game and connect with it so much more. But fortunately, you don't need to have experienced depression to enjoy this game. The fast-paced gameplay is incredibly exhilarating with extremely tight controls, and no matter how many times I failed, I just wanted to keep on going, keep trying to best myself, pick myself up, dust myself off, and try again. This game also has a fantastic soundtrack from fast-paced to slower methodical tracks. There are so many reasons to play Celeste no matter who you are, and it will for sure be one of the best games you play in 2018, I guarantee it. My review of Celeste was fine. I also wish I could tweak it a bit and not constantly remind the audience how depressed I am. Yes, I, I, I am glad I mentioned it in the video. I just felt like I kept going back to it. I kept talking about how the little hidden things you'd only see if you have depression. I know that was a bit of a tough watch, but the thought was there. Oh God, I wanna say thank Thankfully a newer game as this video came out in October of 2020 But that's actually still three years ago, huh? Where is the time going? Spiritfarer is number six Spiritfarer is a cozy wonderful little game that deals with death Stella is a fairy master to the deceased who with your aid befriends and cares for spirits before releasing them into the afterlife. You do this by helping the spirits with whatever they need to accept their fate and just move on already. There are many different requests given from these spirits that will have you farm and mine, fish, harvest, cook, and even craft your way across the mythical seas. Featuring gorgeously hand-drawn and animated characters, Spiritfarer is a management sim that as you play will have you building things like kitchens to cook your food, farms, and even little guest homes for the spirits to temporarily live in. There is plenty more you will create upon your ship and even more you can find and discover by sailing to other islands and exploring the world around you. What this game does best is deal with its underlying themes of death and acceptance in a way unlike any other game has even attempted to before. The story and dialogue is brilliantly written with believable characters and moments that will have you questioning your own real life purpose on this planet. I grew attached to so many of my spirit guests and new friends and then right as I felt like I had finally gotten to know them, it was 
time for me to help them move on and they were gone. In a beautiful way, by helping these spirits accept their own mortality, the game in turn teaches you the acceptance of death itself. I get chills. I got chills when I wrote that and I got chills when I said that. And if you weren't sold on the game already, you can play co-op with a buddy and your buddy gets to play as the cat. So yeah, buy it. Now is probably a good time, speaking of just Spirit Spiritfarer, the game, to talk about how much indies have done for me as far as expanding what I'm willing to play. Before the Switch, I was really a triple A guy. I liked my first party Nintendo games, and as far as anything else, I would play the next big blockbuster. And I still do that. But I fell into this hole of doing eShop videos, because at first I realized they did well in the algorithm. So I kept wanting to find these indie games to play. And I really started to realize how unique they were, how fun they were, and how many different kinds of experiences in gaming I could be having. And it was a game like Spiritfarer that I found cozy, slow-paced, management sim style. That's just not who I was at the time, and I fell in love with it. It opened my eyes to so many other new experiences since then, and I think for that reason, I remember it so much more fondly than even some games like Hollow Knight, which of course I'm gonna love. Number five, thankfully, was only two years ago in March 21st, 2021, and that is my all-time favorite beat-em-up game, which is the name of this channel, so you know it's gotta be high on the list, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. I don't really like beat-em-ups that much. It's a long story, don't ask. But Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the game, has always been the exception to that rule, as this is, in my opinion, the greatest beat-em-up of all time. So imagine my disappointment, waking up one morning and finding that it's V gone from the Xbox Live Online Marketplace and I couldn't play it anymore. But all these years later, thankfully, the Nintendo Switch and other places saved this game and re-released it. And I have to say, I'm in lesbian love. I'm in love once again. To start, visually, the game is a masterpiece with a beautifully animated and vibrant pixel art style that represents the original graphic novel art style perfectly. Cute characters and wonderful world design. It's fantastic. Next, the music. Oh my lord, it's like the best part. Scott Pilgrim is synonymous with its music, so of course the game is pumped full of incredible pop rock chiptune beats composed by the band Anamanaguchi. Anim the entire soundtrack is just perfect. Catch It'll get stuck in your head for weeks, and it even topped Billboard charts after it released. As for the gameplay, on the surface, it appears as a standard punch and kick beat em up, but it has so many extra layers the further into the game you play. Around the levels, you can enter storefronts and purchase food or items. These can heal you or be equipped to you, boosting your attack and defense stats, adding an RPG esque element into the mix. Which is crucial as the difficulty level ramps up quick, becoming almost insufferable early on unless you really utilize all the upgrades available to you. Just, uh, don't go spending too many coins buying up all the bread. Bread makes you fat. Bread makes you fat? There are so many reasons why I consider this an eShop gem, but just the fact that it's such a fantastic game that we had no way of playing for so many years. To get it portably on the Switch out of nowhere, it felt too good to be true. This is also topical because there's a new cartoon of that now, and apparently it's very good. July 11, 2019. If you thought for a second that I wouldn't pass up the chance of putting Link onto my t-shirt design and technically getting away from it from a legal standpoint, because yes, Nintendo, don't think too hard about this, but I'm selling a shirt with Link on it. Cadence of Hyrule. All right, I recently reviewed Cadence of Hyrule in my video all about Switch games I can't stop playing, which was true until Mario Maker came out. And then that just changed everything. <laughs> But regardless of that, Cadence of Hyrule will still end up in my top five Switch games of 2019 for sure. So I won't repeat myself. If you want to watch my review of the game, you can go ahead and click here, or there'll be a link down below, or a link at the end of the video. I actually forgot about this, but I didn't actually review it in the eShop video. I had just reviewed it in its own separate video and decided to put it in the eShop video and just point people to the other video. It didn't feel right, so I never did that again. But I do kind of wish I did that again. 
again. Why didn't I do that with Hades? Also, it's not really the only reason why I put it in the video is to be on the t-shirt. I loved Crypt of the Necro Dancer so much, and to get a Zelda-themed version of that was mind-blowing. The music was insane, and it was just so much fun to play. I remember going live on Twitch the day it came out, just trying to get the fastest runtime possible, and I think I had like a 30-minute run in that game. In my opinion, best Zelda spin-off made by a team that isn't Nintendo that's ever happened. It was 2019 when this next game came out. Goose Game. Loosey Goosey, for some reason, a tiny game about an even smaller goose took the world by storm and captured the hearts of everyone. You are a silly goose that can honk, duck, flap, and most affectionately hold things in its beak. Or more accurately, steal things with its beak, hide them, and or taunt the humans with them, and, and that, that, that is the entire game. Screwing with people, annoying the heck out of them, and watching them try to deal with a goose that just won't leave them alone. It's such wholesome, hilarious is fun. I honestly couldn't tell you how many 30 second clips I grabbed of this game using the Switch's capture button to then go and show Kim later and both of us would be laughing at this stupid little goose. I think this might be the one actually where he goes to sit down. <laughs> it's just so stupid because it looks like it's what a goose would do. The game not only manages to capture Nintendo's own inherent innocence in their games, but also it's just the perfect game to pick up and knock out a few to-do tasks and then put back down for later. Or, and this is actually my only complaint, finish it in one sitting, because it's only about a two hour game, unfortunately. It does have quite a bit of replay value to be fair, but two hours, it just left me wanting more. I can't fathom it, but I just love that this tiny two hour adventure about a tiny goose <laughs> ended up becoming a solid reason to own a Nintendo Switch. You know, all of these clips have made me realize how bad my face rash was. I just kind of accepted that's how I looked. My cheeks were always so rosy red and sore. It was only like a year ago I went to a dermatologist. She was like, yeah, you have this and gave me a cream. And now it's I'm not even wearing makeup now. Why did I look like that for five years? <laughs> Another reason why Goose Game is so high on this list, other than I loved it so much, was it was weirdly revolutionary at the time. It was such a simple concept. It was so basic and everybody was talking about it. It became a big stream hit and it's just a game about a little goose stealing some things. It's so innocent and wholesome. It really won my heart. Number two on this list, how are we going at home? Am I close to your list? Are you baffled by my? Eastwood. A masterclass in pixel art design with every scene packed dense with detail and a catchy chiptune soundtrack that'll get stuck in your head for days. Eastwood is a story-driven action adventure that seemingly borrows gameplay elements from Zelda, Earthbound, Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy, and it borrows story and art elements from Studio Ghibli. But it all comes together in its own unique way to create something that is solely original on its own. The story follows Sam and John and you play as both. Their relationship similar to that of Joel and Ellie's. The duo live underground in a community taught to fear the outside world. They're told there's nothing up there, but Sam doesn't believe it. Determined to find her way to the surface, John follows and they both end up exiled to the world above. They follow the train, which is always headed eastward through a series of different towns, each with its own culture, characters, and story. There's a nice blend of narrative-driven cutscenes, done dungeon crawling with combat and puzzles, often having to switch between Sam and John on the fly to accomplish different tasks or traverse the environment safely, ultimately ending with awesome boss fights. In between all of that, you can make some time for Breath of the Wild inspired cooking and some mini games. You can find an old gaming machine where you can play another game, a full old school Dragon Quest clone game that's really hard to beat and actually kind of fun. I feel a lot of the story could have been refined and hacked away at to present a shorter, more engaging playthrough. And I only bring this up because it is so story heavy that I want you to know that before going into it. This game is a game that, as I said, should be experienced rather than just shown to you. I adore 
story-driven games. So it's no surprise that this one left such a huge impact on me, but also so many of these games over the years have been this pixel art style. This one by far was the most enchanting. The way the pixels moved on every, I want to say, page of the game because it was so beautiful. It was like a storybook. Blew me away. I'll say now more than ever, it deserves this second spot with the new DLC coming out. It's a whole extra side story that you can play even if you haven't played the base game. Game, but if you have played the base game, it's a nice little way to end the story of these two characters just living their life after everything they went through. I feel like we crossed off a lot of boxes as far as what this one could be, right? We went through Hollow Knight, we did Celeste. So I, I don't think any of you will be surprised at what is number one, Stardew Valley. The next game on this list is arguably the most popular and one that I'm sure a lot of you have heard of already, and that's Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is a farming game inside a beautifully created, vibrant world. It's an RPG mixed with a farm simulator and it works so well. Grow your crops on the farm, enter the mines to defeat creatures, use resources you find to upgrade your equipment and find new areas to explore. You never really know where your journey is going to take you next in this game, but never feels repetitive. There's always a mystery about it and I like that. Farm fight craft. There's a lot going on in this game and a lot going on in the town too. You can head into town and you can make friendships and relationships. I'm not going to talk about it much more than that because we all know it's fun. So. We should all go out and play it. You know what's so funny about me putting this number one? Out of all of my reviews and all my eShop videos, this is probably one of the shortest. And I gotta come clean about that now. October 27, 2017. At that point, I hadn't played it that much. I was new to the Switch and making these eShop videos. Everyone was talking about Stardew, so I played it a little and I was like, okay, good enough. I think three or four years later, I remember I made a video about what is the most actual addicting Switch game and it was all about me playing Stardew Valley because I had randomly picked the game back up again because I wanted to play something with Kim and we both got lost in Stardew Valley for weeks if not months. I stopped making videos for a while because I couldn't stop playing Stardew Valley. I had that whole addicted to series for a while which I kind of stopped doing because one it was getting a little old and two people found negative connotations with it and me being addicted to things which I understood. But if we were to talk about games I've been most addicted to on this console over the years. Maybe only next to Dragon Quest Builders, Stardew Valley. I have probably put by far the most amount of time in. Well, and Animal Crossing, actually, those are pretty close. That's my 10. And I know there's probably a lot of games that I missed. Believe me, I know because I'm sure I've reviewed them in the past. But this was just the ones that really stood out to me. The ones I have the best memories of. These are the standouts. They're also all the games I put on that t-shirt. I took all of the things that I liked. I made a montage of the actual characters and then I gave it to Kim and I said, can you just make this all one art style? And she in the first take made this design. I didn't put anything for inscription on the shirt at first. I was just going to leave it off. And then the little squirrel card that she stuck in there, she's so wonderful. That's it for now. This was a very special video and I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I've been making a lot of videos lately. Okay, so subscribe. I'm making more. I appreciate it.